Hi, this is Tom Hoskins for Mining Journal. I'm here with David Catterford, who's CEO of Champion Iron, which is a high-grade iron ore miner, which owns and operates the Bloom Lake Mining Complex in Quebec, Canada. Hi, David. How's it going? Hi, Tom. Very well. Yourself? Yeah, I'm very good. Thank you. Um, now, before we get into the kind of meteor stuff, I think it'd be helpful if you provided our viewers with a high-level overview of Champion and what makes you unique as a mining company. Yeah, thanks for the question. So Champion, uh, as you mentioned, operates uh, a mine, um, produces high-grade iron ore out of the lateral trough. We produce today around 8 million tons of high-grade iron ore, and we're currently doubling our production, going to 16 uh, million tons per year. One of the big benefits of Champion is that we, we benefit from over $4.5 billion of invested capital to be able to allow us to produce 16 million tons per year. And we're in a net cash position. So our balance sheet is uh, in very good shape. Managers and uh, directors own roughly about 10% of the business. So every time we take a decision, we're fully aligned with shareholders because we are shareholders. And we've also got significant amount of resources in a small radius around our project, allowing us to continue to grow in the future to be able to be ready to supply the demand of high-grade iron ore. Okay, so yeah, I mean, you're talking talking a lot about high grade iron ore that that sets you apart from from your competitors. Um, maybe you can talk a bit about why that product, why your product, is so fundamental to reducing emissions in steel, because it's really the high grade where um, where those savings are made, isn't it? Yeah, for the past ten years, we've seen a premium increase for the high grade material because it allows steel mills to be more productive. What we've seen over the past few years is that not only it allows steel mills to be more productive, but it also allows them to reduce their CO2 emissions in the steel making process. Steel production today around the world is, accounts for roughly about 8% of the CO2 emissions on the planet. So there's a clear shift and governments have pretty much aligned around the world to say we need to uh, reduce our CO2 emissions. And steel manufacturing is one of the um, most polluting areas in the world. So there's quite a lot of efforts to be able to do that transition, but the only known technology today to be able to reduce CO2 emissions is to use higher grade iron ore in the blast furnaces or shift from blast furnaces to electric arc furnaces. Now, this is not a new technology. It's been used for decades uh, in countries like the US or in Europe or other areas in the world. And so it's a known technology and it manages to reduce by half the CO2 emissions per ton of steel produced. The one caveat with this is that when you operate an electric arc furnace, you need to use scrap or extra pure uh, high grade iron ore to be able to produce your steel. And that's where we fit. So we produce one of the materials that is gonna have the, the highest increase in demand over the next years. Okay, now I think it would be remiss of us not to mention um, events in Ukraine over the past few weeks, especially because they've had such a significant impact on commodity markets, um, you know, Russia and Ukraine, both large producers of high grade iron ore. So what does this conflict mean for global iron ore markets and how do you think it's going to impact your business? Yeah, when, when we uh, started the company in 2014, uh, it was key for us to operate in a stable mining jurisdiction. And that's why we chose Canada and the Labrador Trough to be able to set, the, uh, set up the company. When we look in terms of the um, Ukraine-Russia situation, uh, well, they're, they're one of the three largest hubs of high-grade iron ore um, in the world. So the, the Russia-Ukraine is quite a large a supplier of high-grade uh, iron ore around the world. Um, when we see conflicts um, like what we're seeing now, or when we saw events like what happened in the past in Brazil with the dam breaches, well, uh, that puts a flag up for our various customers from where they actually want to supply their high-grade iron ore. So since uh, the beginning of the conflict in terms of short-term impact, we've had quite a lot of demand to be able to supply our customers or new potential customers with high-grade iron ore. But I think one of the, the important uh, factors as well is I think there's gonna be a long-term shift in terms of the actual um, supply chain in the high-grade iron ore. Uh, we, we're seeing a lot of customers want to align themselves long term with stable jurisdictions like Canada to be able to supply uh, the high grade iron ore or the high grade products in the coming years. OK, I, I just want to go back to the environmental piece for a, for a second. Um, there's 
expected, widely expected to be legislation, more legislation around carbon markets. You've got the European Carbon Border Adjustment Mechanism, um, you know, on the table at the moment. Does that pose a threat to your business? Or how do you view it? Yeah, we, we see that as um, uh, a very good and positive element for our business in the sense that today uh, we, well, we, us and our neighbors in Canada, we have the lowest CO2 intensity per ton of iron ore in the high grade space worldwide. This is because we benefit from hydroelectric power um, and that, that makes up for about 99% of the grid here in Quebec. So uh, around 70% of the energy consumed at Bloom Lake today is hydroelectric power. So in terms of taxes for the actual raw material, uh, we see that as very beneficial for us. But the game changer for a producer like Champion is the actual scope three. So the amount of CO2 uh, emissions that we allow our customers to reduce. Today, when a customer buys our material, instead of buying lower grade uh, iron ore in the market, um, if you compare our production, once we get phase one and two up and running, we're gonna allow our customers to reduce by roughly about 2 million tons of CO2 emissions per year. Now that's a significant uh, reduction. And when you talk about carbon taxes, uh, you can plug in whatever number that you want, but if we use just $100 as a, uh, an example, well, 2 million tons of um, CO2 reduction versus a $100 uh, carbon tax, you're looking at $2 billion potential of reduction for our, for our customers. So you can see that it's gonna create significant value for our shareholders. Uh, and also for our clients. So, so and presumably, you know, if, if there was a premium green steel price, that would also act in your favor? Yeah, we believe because today we're the lowest uh, CO2 intensity per ton of iron ore produced in the high grade, we, we were going to benefit on that sense. But also, I think what is key is really what we allow our customers to reduce in terms of CO2 emissions. So on scope one and two, uh, we, we have a clear advantage. And on the scope three, that's really where we differentiate ourselves. Okay, now finally, we, we need to get into exactly what Champion is doing as a business right now. Um, now that phase two of your flag flagship project is being delivered, what, what, are the, what are the next steps? What, what can we expect to see from you guys over the next six months to year? Well, what's, uh, what's important is really the fact that we're, we're currently doubling our production. As you mentioned, our phase two project, that's um, uh, a very uh, key project right now. We're going to be able to deliver it ahead of schedule, even if we built this during the, uh, the COVID pandemic. So uh, a great achievement that our teams uh, managed to do. We'll be able to deliver the project roughly about three months ahead of schedule. And what we're working on in parallel is sort of there's there's two fronts where we're working on growth. One is to be able to increase the value of our product, and one is to be able to uh, be ready to um, increase volume to make sure that we can supply the market with this high grade uh, iron ore. So in terms of product uh, development, we're delivering a feasibility study uh, mid summer this year um, in June. Uh, this will allow us to um, have the capex and the opex of a project that will take 8 million of our tons and upgrade them from 66 to 69%. Uh, why are we doing this? Because there's a significant premium in the market today to uh, go to 69% uh, material, and we see that premium potentially increasing in the future. So uh, this will be able to be delivered this summer. Uh, we're also working on a technology called cold bonded pelletizing, uh, where we've finished all the lab work, we've done the first pilot plants, and we're now doing a commercial pilot plant. This is to allow us to produce uh, a pellet that will then be able to uh, supply either the electric arc furnaces or the blast furnaces. And these pellets, uh, instead of being fired up and heated, which consumes a significant amount of energy, will use a, an organic binder to be able to uh, cure them at room temperature. So that not only reduces operating costs, but also a uh, significant reduction in CO2 emissions. So in terms of product development, we've got two projects going on right now. And in terms of volume, as we mentioned a bit earlier, we hold the equivalent of about 10 Bloom Lakes in our portfolio, just a few kilometers away. And we're delivering now a feasibility study for a project that we call CAMI that we purchased a few uh, months ago. And uh, this project, uh, the feasibility study aims to produce 8 million tons 
of 69% uh, FE material, just a few kilometers away from Bloom Lake. So that feasibility study will be delivered uh, at the end of this year, calendar year. So we've got two sort of fronts that we're working on in parallel to continue to grow. We just started recently uh, our inaugural dividend. So we have started our strategy to return capital to shareholders, but we're really focused on creating value for our shareholders through growth. Okay, David. Well, um, I think that's all we have time for, but thank you very much indeed for that fascinating overview of Champion and um, what, can we, well, what we can expect to see from you in the coming months. Um, it just remains for me to thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you, Tom. Great. Okay. Well, to all of those viewers, um, either at home in the office, um, thank you for joining us today and we'll see you again soon. Goodbye.